Hey everybody, here's a follow-up to the video that I just put out about the 251 minor, and because I said it could be autumn leaves, I'm going to use the first eight measures of autumn leaves, but do the major 251, and I'm going to do basically for the the A minor 7 to the D7 to the G major 7. I'm going to start with an A minor triad for A minor 7, B flat major for my D7, and B minor. And I'm going to show you a couple interesting things with the dispersions as well and some intervals. So check it out. This is uh, what I'm going to start with. A minor, B flat major, B minor. And you can kind of hear the cadence already. You know, if I put the bass notes in there, here's A minor. Now I've got a B flat major over D. It's a nice sounding altered dominant and then I'm resolving on my this major 7 with that B minor. So check it out in context. So you can hear the sound, it's really cool, and the thing of it is, is when I get to that B flat, it shares a common tone with the B minor because that D note that's in there repeats itself for that next chord, and that's the note to kind of listen for. Um, again, I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it a million times more because it's so important. When you play these chord tones, these sounds, these shapes, these triads, these intervals, you have to listen to what's happening to each note at that moment to see how it is affecting the voice leading and how it's affecting the change of the chord because that's ultimately what's happening in the harmony and you're expressing the harmony through these notes. Now if I took the intervals of those triads and, and dispersed them like playing this A minor to a B flat major and then to a B minor that that top note of course it it doesn't do much other than just go up to the D and stay on the D but what's cool if I take the interval chromatically you hear that fifth motion of how it really works with that altered dominant listen to it in context really works great with that half step move, those intervals and that's what you want to be able to do is when you play an interval like that you want to recognize what do I do with the notes does one note stay does one note move do they both move which direction do they move in when I went to the uh, C major 7 I changed the interval because I had fifths up to the G major 7 and then I raised the top note keeping the bottom note and of course I could there's the half diminished so now I have this a major six. I could move the bottom note to a diminished and then resolve here. Now let's check out if I put the bottom note in the triad. So I have a C in the bottom, then I have a, a D, and then a D again. happening there. Again, these are things that you have to practice and do them first in step time so you understand the mechanics and the sound of what you're going for. And then play it in real time. Now I did it at a faster tempo here. I wouldn't recommend that in the beginning. I'd say slow it down. But if you can do it in step time and hear the chords moving and of course with that interval in there you recognize that sound as being the two five, one, right? Or doing it this way, with your triads going this way, and put the bass notes in there. This will be a good way for you to really get your lines solid and understand what's happening inside the harmony within the triads and within the intervals.